You've heard of Manos the Hands of Fate, The Room, Plan 9 from Outer Space. These are movies often referred to as so bad they're good, reaching cult status and gaining a huge fan following. The problem is, these were created as serious projects, but they were just victims of budget, time, or ineptitude. Somehow, some filmmakers got the idea to create cult movies without the serious attempt. These movies are designed to be bad. Bad acting, cheap effects, and stories carefully crafted to duplicate the result of inept filmmaking without actually being inept. It's like playing dumb to get people to like you. We've all seen the cheesy creature, disaster, mockbuster movies. The Asylum perfected the formula. Take an animal, combine it with another animal or natural disaster, then throw scores of human victims to get killed by it. Sharks are pretty popular, Well, what if you also like the octopus? We got ya, this is Sharktopus. We opened with someone's vacation video accidentally spliced into the movie. And what about that theme? Chilling, right? You can't do a movie about sharks without opening with a shark attack. Hey, that's a normal shark. I was promised tentacles. Just when you think this poor girl is doomed, it's Sharktopus to the rescue. Surprise, motherfucker. It's all part of a demonstration. Meet the folks responsible. Eric Roberts is Nathan Sands, guy in charge. And Sarah Malakul Lane plays his daughter, Pumpkin. She has the name Nicole, but Pumpkin is more fun to say. This is Commander Who Cares, government contract holder and the reason this thing exists in the first place. They have the latest technology in underwater crotch shots. Sharktopus, or as he's called S-11, is a weapon created for the US Navy to take down drug runners. Sure. He was either created in a lab, or they got a shark and an octopus really, really drunk. But for some reason, the Navy wants to test a shark on these civilians. Gotta impress the guy with the taxpayer checkbook. But the external interface is a prototype. If something were to happen... You did hear me say that's his daughter, right? Lay off the sensual massage, Woody Allen. Sharky's still an animal, and animals got an animal. That's why he's controlled by this device on his head. This thing is the whole key to S-11 being controlled and on our side. You'd think it would make it more durable. S-11 has a kill switch that fails. And S-11 takes it off easier than my cat loses her collar. Now he's loose. S-11 doesn't waste any time and makes with the kill and... Here, enjoy this short skit. Do you like them? Are they humanized? Are they interesting? Do you care? No? Get used to that. Huh? Oh no! Not like this! S11 heads to Mexico, which is not smart. I don't think he has a valid passport. They arrive in Mexico, but the bar crawl will have to wait. For some reason, this operation is ill-equipped to handle contingencies. He's a greedy bastard, no doubt, but he knows these waters better than anyone and he knows what we're up against. Cut, cut. Do it once more, but this time, act. So they need to call in an ex-employee, Andy Flynn, played by Karim Bursin, who just happens to be in Mexico. Who's ready for some tequila ball? Tequila ball? Is that like whiskey dick? I'm retired. Not anymore, amigo. He's reluctant at first, but of course he's gotta do it. S11 escaped. Don't even pretend. More skits, more victims are racked up. That IUD is here somewhere. Great, now the Black Pearl is after me. Hey, that's Roger Corman. Not like this! Well, that happened. <laughs> this should fund the next 15 shark movies. Their secret weapon? They're gonna give S11 a douching he'll never forget. They fired Andy for asking for a raise, and now he names his price. 100 grand, 200 more upon completion. You're a money-grubbing Neanderthal. You like cheap women and cheaper booze. Well, yeah. If you pay me, I can afford better women and more expensive booze. Capitalism. The Sharktopus has not gone unnoticed. This attracts the attention of reporter Stacey Everhart, played by Liv Bond, and her cameraman Bones, played by Hector Jimenez. This guy, Pez, has seen it. He's reluctant to revisit, but he's got a price. Here's a random couple. She's afraid of heights, but he bribes her into bungee jumping. 
they're just a little more extreme in Mexico. Surprise, motherfucker! But the good news, she's not afraid of heights anymore. Andy and Pumpkin work together to track down S11. Ten bucks he gets Pumpkin to like him before the end credits. To raid the old pumpkin patch. The hunt begins. Does Chris inject enough MS-222 to put a bull shark to sleep? How do you think we got Eric Roberts? No, no, stop trying to humanize the victims. It's a hollow gesture at best. It's buffet time. <laughs> Not like this. Surprise, motherfucker. Oh, this is precious. Enough people, it's VWs for dessert. Our heroes saving lives left and right. Oh, yeah. Eric Roberts prepares for his next scene. First bring me a great, big, enormous scotch. I think this is how he prepared for every scene. Andy and a couple of red shirts go after S11. He's expensive, so they want S11 captured alive. Surprise, motherfucker! Apparently, Andy swims faster than the other guys. Ah, the truth comes out. I had the tech boys make some adjustments to S11's subroutines. S11 is running mods. Our two main plot lines cross briefly, and Pez runs out of candy. Not like this. S11 is not impressed by your tiny gun. But it's time to munch. Surprise, motherfucker! After these messages, uh, we'll be right back. We get a quiet moment at last. I've been horrible to you this whole time. Yeah, you've been kind of a cunt. Hey! S11 has gone off the grid. He stopped using his credit cards. I can't track him without the paper trail. But Andy tries getting chummy. Surprise, motherfucker! Ah, Santos! No, don't kill my best friend I'm on a last name basis with. He even dies unconvincingly. I hope S11 is bulletproof, or else this former Navy SEAL is missing from six feet away. No! What are you doing? What I should have done from the beginning. Fire your agent? Attend acting class. Oh, become a waiter full time. In pursuit, but S11 is just too slippery. Haha, -ha, who's chasing who, fuckers? Sam's offer of a million dollars isn't enough to convince Andy not to kill S11. So he's going in. Bring a bottle. Nice mom jeans, though. Another vacation ruined? Or just made more awesome? Oh my god! <laughs> Booking.com. Booking. Ah! Sands arrives to protect his investment. Last chance for you to reconsider my offer. But S11 is an ungrateful prick. Surprise, motherfucker! He finally comes around when his pumpkin is in danger. But it's too late for character development. Now, is he saying Nicole, Nicole, or Nicole, Nicole? I love you, fuck. They meet with the reporter again and hitch a ride to the next stop on S11's beach buffet itinerary. This looks fun. It'd be a shame if a sharktopus attacked. Surprise, motherfucker! But we have one last play. S11's kill switch is still inside the animal, but inaccessible. I think I can access the kill switch with my computer. They need to get close enough to poke it with a giant dart so Pumpkin can kill him. Bones dies off screen, and the reporter finally gets an exclusive. Give me a kiss, baby! <laughs> hey, he finally hit something! Bullets didn't hurt this thing, but a needle can... Never mind, keep going. Andy's close to getting eaten, and Nicole discovers the password to kill S11 is Pumpkin. Aww. Yay! Let's end with one more cringe. That thing better not jump out at us again. No. That only happens in the movies. <laughs> that was Sharktopus. The big name, Eric Roberts, isn't as big a part of the action. Might have been budgetary, I think they were paying him in scotch. But at least he got lots of sun. He wasn't playing a talking cat and there was no human centipede to be found. The other two main leads are as flat and cliched as they can be. She starts cold, then warms up. He takes off his shirt. See, they left no impression on me. The real star of this movie is Leggy Boy. The sight of the guy walking along is just nuts. Shark, octopus, I'm pretty sure they both need water to breathe. It's oddly self-aware. Former Navy SEAL slash oceanographer is tracking down this abomination. I'd watch it. How do you critique a movie designed to be this cheesy? 
it's not even considered parody anymore, this is its own subgenre. With the bad effects, bad acting, bad sets, it's about watching a ridiculous super animal eat people for an hour and a half. The lowered standards might make all this death seem easier to digest. Pun intended. The effects may look silly, but, but this is pretty standard with these movies. A punchline doesn't have to be photoreal to get the point across. It's a cliched story as well. I feel like you can write these movies with a BuzzFeed quiz. The premise is ridiculous, but most of the characters are just too serious. It's mostly a series of skits that set up a human victim, say a couple of lines to tell part of their story, then kills them. Repeat. The rest of the movie is vacation footage b-roll establishing shots, and the pursuit is as unexciting as it can be. Sharktopus is one and a half bees. Yes, it's awful, cliched, and just plain dumb. It wants to be funny, but instead of being deadpan and tongue-in-cheek, the humor is forced, bland, and just plain off-putting. With characters you can't really care about, nameless victims, and a monster that's just too silly, you don't really have to turn your brain off to watch it. It kind of does that for you. What does that tell you when I say Sharknado is a better movie than this? Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, the bell, you know that usual YouTube stuff. This is the newbie, and I'll see you later, kids. Toodles. And special thanks to my patrons, you guys rock!